Today we're going to be discussing binaural audio recording and the virtual 3D experience through sound. But before we get started, I'd like to first say a word on plagiarism. Suffolk County Community College clearly states plagiarism as to steal or pass off the ideas or words of another without crediting the source. Plagiarism is a very serious matter, especially within the realms of higher learning and research and education. Here at Suffolk Community College, we take plagiarism very seriously. And we want you to know that all our citations follow APA format, and you should always give credit where credit is due. So today, we're here to discuss binaural audio recording and answer the age-old question, will prior knowledge of an event you're about to experience ruin the authenticity of that experience? Now, I'm sure some of you have had a coworker or friend give away the ending to a movie, television series, or perhaps even a book, and I'm sure you would say yes, right? Well, today we're here to break down this question in a statistically significant manner, gather and analyze data, and answer this question once and for all. Now, in the interest of time, we could not watch the entire television series Lost, nor could we read Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. But we have picked a much shorter and equally intriguing topic, which is binaural audio recording. Now, for those of you who do not know what binaural audio recording is, it is a method of recording sound or music using two displaced microphones to create a 3D stereo effect. One of the most well-known and readily accessible examples of binaural audio recording is also the one we've chosen for this research topic, entitled Virtual Barbershop. It's produced by QSound Labs in Calgary, Alberta, and published via YouTube by the username Lovely Virus. In 4 minutes and 40 seconds, it is a fine example of this recording method, and I also might add, very realistic. So, to answer our research question, we randomly surveyed 50 adults of varying backgrounds and ages. In our virtual barbershop, you can hear two men, Manuel and Luigi, interacting with each other and cutting your hair with stunning realism. With binaural audio recording, it appears that they move further away from you and then move closer to you. At the end of your haircut, Luigi walks away and tells you that your ability to gauge this distance based upon sound is the amazing power of your brain. He then whispers in your ear the word Cetera, which is your brain processing this distance based upon sound. Now, we use this as a key point in our research, the whisper. And we told 21 adults that the whisper would happen and we told the other 29 in the survey that nothing would happen, and thus surveyed them on their reaction to the whisper and whether it was realistic or not. Am I supposed to look at you? You're supposed to keep your eyes So here's our gathered data for our 50 surveyed adults. Here we have, did it feel real, yes and no, and here we have, did you know prior to, with yes and no. So out of the 21 adults that knew about it for the survey, 10 said yes, it felt realistic, and 11 said no, it did not feel realistic. Out of the 29 adults that did not know beforehand, 24 said yes, it felt realistic, and 5 said no. So now, to make sure our data is valid, we have to obtain the expected results. To do so, we multiply the row total by the column total divided by the grand total. So here we have for yes and yes, 21 from there and 34. Multiply those and divide them by the grand total, which is 50. And that equals 14.28. To save time, we went ahead and did the math for all the expected frequencies, which is row total times column total divided by grand total. And as you can see, all our expected frequencies here in parentheses are all greater than or equal to 5, which means all of our data is valid. So, for our research, the null hypothesis, having prior info makes no difference in the test subject. The alternative hypothesis is having prior info does make a difference in the test subject's reaction. So, if our chi-square score is greater than or equal to the critical value, 
we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If the critical value exceeds or is equal to chi-square score, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Yeah. So, our next step in this equation is finding out the chi-square score. To find that, we need the sum of the observed numbers minus the expected numbers squared divided by the expected. So, for example, this box, yes and yes, we're going to do 10 minus 14.28 squared divided by 14.28. Now, we've gone ahead and done the math for each box here, and here they are. When you add those all up, you get 7.4602 is your chi-square score. So here we have a chi-squared distribution table. The keys to the table are the degrees of freedom and the 0 .05 and 0 .01 significant values. The degrees of freedom are columns minus 1 times rows minus 1. In each case there are 2 minus 1, so 1 times 1 is 1, giving us the answers of 3.84 and 6.63 at 0 .05 and 0 .01 respectively. After obtaining our critical values at both the 5 and 1% levels, we can conclude that our chi-square score does in fact exceed our critical values, and if the critical values are less than the chi-square score, we reject the null, suggesting that there is a difference in having prior knowledge of what to expect in a video does influence your virtual reality experience. So don't forget, no two people are alike. No two snowflakes are alike. No two puppies are alike. Come on!